All right, so to start, I think it's important to note the China versus United States trade tensions. Um, so the United States imports more from China than from any other country. Uh, and China is one of the largest export markets for U.S. goods and services. Um, this has helped the United States in the form of lower prices for consumers and higher profits for businesses. But this trade relationship has been rather tested as of late. Um, China has benefited greatly from trade with the United States. Uh, China now has the second largest economy in the world behind the United States. Um, and some issues around this, uh, first being national security. Um, so U.S. policymakers have increasingly been war uh, sorry, been worried about China's aim to acquire important U.S. technology uh, to achieve Beijing's industrial policy goals and boost China's military. Uh, officials from the United States have regularly charged Beijing with stealing intellectual property and forcing American companies to disclose their technologies in order to conduct business in China. Uh, Washington DC has also raised concerns that U.S. companies that use Chinese tech could put the United States national security at risk. Um, and for example, if you did not know, TikTok, which is a Chinese-owned company, is probably the most popular app, I would say worldwide, um, and they have access to tons of data, actually all of the data, and they invade your privacy on a regular basis, if you know it or not. Uh, but I digress, moving on. What lies ahead for this um, trade between the US and China? So Biden's willingness to continue economic ex escalation uh, against China has raised the question about the future of this trade relationship and what it looks like at scale. Um, to further escalate this conflict, the United States lawmakers have proposed legislation that would require government investment plans to divest from Chinese companies and American regulators have also threatened to completely delist Chinese companies from the United States stock exchanges. Oh, and by the way, Apple, which is one of the biggest companies in the world, is looking to actually move some of their production out of China and into other parts of Asia as well as in-house here in America. Uh, but the Chips and Science Act and Inflation Reduction Act, both of which were passed in August of 2022, will allocate hundreds of billions of dollars to research and production of high-tech goods such as semiconductors. Uh, seeing as though we import those types of goods from China at an extremely high rate, uh, it makes a lot of sense moving forward to invest more of these technologies here in America rather than relying on importing them from China. Uh, so now pivoting to the UK, uh, a press release posted by the British Chambers of Commerce gave a detailed economic outlook for the UK. Uh, they predict that the economy won't see any real growth until quarter four of 2023 uh, if you don't know quarter four starts in october um, uk inflation is expected to have peaked at 11 percent and to slow down to five percent by quarter four um, the bcc uh, the british chambers of commerce expect uh, the uk economy to remain in recession for five quarters um, the annual expectation for GDP growth in 2023 is now negative 1.3%, which is in line with the Bank of England's predictions. Uh, a sharp decline in household spending as a result of rising energy prices, uh, declining wages, frozen income tax allowances and higher mortgage payments is a major factor in the economic downturn of 2023. Exports are projected to reduce as a result of the poor outlook for the economy, 
uh, but this decline will also be matched with a more significant drop in imports. Uh, BCC research has shown that business confidence has been falling for months uh, as they've run up against a wall of rising cost, uh, interest rates, and taxes. Very few businesses will be even willing to invest. Uh, the real concern here is that because growth will still be so sluggish when the economy exits the recession, uh, the UK will fall behind a lot of its competitors. Uh, so it's not really looking too great for uh, the UK right now. All right, so the next topic is the impact of digital technologies. Uh, so starting off, what is digital transformation? Uh, so on a basic level, digital transformation involve using digital technologies to change a business process to become more efficient or effective. Um, the aim is to use technology to considerably improve an existing service rather than just simply recreating it in a digital format. Uh, digital technologies have advanced faster than any innovation in history. Uh, for example, in the health sector, AI-enabled technology is helping to save lives, uh, diagnose diseases, and extend life expectancy. Uh, in the education sector, virtual learning environments have provided new programs and opportunities for students to be more efficient. Um, blockchain technology has also opened up new ideas and avenues for how people conduct business entirely. Um, technology has historically transformed the labor force, uh, bringing in new types of styles and employment, while also making others obsolete and causing larger systemic changes. Um, it is extremely possible and likely that the current wave of technological changes will have a very significant impact. Um, for example, the International Labor Organization estimates that the shift to a greener economy could create nearly 24 million jobs globally by 2030 through the adoption of sustainable practices in the energy sector. Meanwhile, um, other reports are suggesting that 800 million people could lose their jobs to automation by the year 2030. Um, so long story short, um, technology is advancing at a rapid rate. Uh, there will be a lot more new opportunities for growth and business and jobs. But at the same time, there will be a lot of jobs that will become useless due to this advancing technology that can replace uh, this basically the same thing a human can do. Automation is the future, and if businesses can do more automation, it'll save them more time, which then expands their profit margins. And also a wise man once said, uh, adapt or die. I, I think that was Charles Darwin. So it seems uh, on a global scale, um, the year 2023 we should probably expect more pain in the economy uh, I would say more so in the first half as they pivot away from the problems that started the pandemic uh, the end of 2023 going into 2024 we should see some more growth and upside uh, one of the biggest causes of this pandemic was the global shortage of chips um, and all the chips mainly came out of China um, also, that virus came out of China that shut the whole world down. So, I mean, as the United States being the biggest economy in the world, them moving out of China and creating more things here in America and learning how to rely less on China should in turn boost the entire global economy. There's also a lot of emerging markets that are set up in very good places to be very successful coming up. I mean, we have India who is climbing the ranks on the global economy. Uh, we have Saudi Arabia making a bunch of business moves. Uh, China is partnering with Saudi Arabia to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, the only, the only, you know, issue is Russia. I don't. We, we can't really do anything about Russia. I don't know what they got going on over there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the the global outlook for the next year or so. 
uh, or what you can expect uh, but I do hope you found something valuable from this video uh, maybe drop me a comment on what your predictions are or what you feel like we're at or where we're headed for this next year uh, i would love to have some conversation about that but i would appreciate it if you could leave me a like on the video if you did enjoy it um also be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want more videos just like this one